welcome to Black Onyx Alternative Investments, where we hope to keep you better informed by bringing you face to face with South Africa's most talented asset managers. Today I'm introducing you to Stefan Engelbrecht from Capricorn Fund Managers. Stefan, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Andrew. Stefan, let's get started by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the industry. Andrew, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, for me to tell you a bit about Capricorn myself. So, how did I get into alternative investments? Well, honestly, I fell into it a little bit uh, and completely by accident. Um, I grew up in uh, a small rural um, farming town called Machogong, and that was its name from the beginning. It never had a name change or anything like that. And I promise you, alternative investments were not really high up on the agenda in any uh, braai at, uh, at Machogong. Uh, I then went into uh, to study financial mathematics at uh, the Rand Afrikaans University, UJ now, um, and that's where I studied uh, financial mathematics. And that was my first introduction to options, derivatives, investment strategies, black skulls from first principle. <laughs> and as weird as it sounds, but it was really love at first sight. I, I just love the dynamics, I love the, the, f the mathematics behind the markets, and I got quite passionate about it. I started reading extensively on it, and I knew this is where I want to make my career. Uh, from uh, from um, UJ or RAU, uh, I then went to a little wealth management company called Imalivest, and I was very fortunate there that the directors of Imalivest uh, believed in alternative investments, and they gave me a lot of freedom even from a very young age, to go and express my views and my, my theories in the market with real capital. And I just learned so much there. And uh, they also gave me the opportunity to um, broaden my horizons. So I did a CFA, um, completed my CFA, and then also did an MBA at, um, at the Stellenbosch University. That's where I realized that mathematics, or quant, um, as valuable as it can be, it still is only but one um, piece in a very big jigsaw of the investment world. And that there are a lot of other things that, that you should um, supplement it with to get to a, a very strong investment case for, your, um, for any investment thesis. From Imalivest, um, they then entered into a joint venture with Capricorn, um, where I brought some of my investment strategies and Imali has got a bit of a inv um, stake um, in the strategies at Capricorn. Um, and that's when I moved to the Capricorn um, offices and where I learned about the real world of, of hedge funds and not just the, the small little nitpicky uh, world that, that I was uh, um, open to in, uh, in Imali Vest. There, Damon Hoff and Matthew Albach took me under their wings and Wow, I learned a lot from those guys. They, they really helped me a lot um, to, to really cement my, my view of, of the world and, and my investment philosophy. Um, and from there, I just uh, wormed myself deeper and deeper into the investment strategy and the investment approach at Capricorn. And the rest, as I say, is history. And uh, now I'm the portfolio manager of, uh, of Capricorn um, hedge funds. Describe the history of the firm and some of the members of the team and some of the funds that you represent. Capricorn was started in 2003 um, with the launch of the Hollot Stable Fund, uh, now just the Stable Fund. Um, it was set up to, it was seeded by Hollot Insurance um, as a way for them to optimize their, their free float um, of, of the insurance arm. As such, given that it was uh, insurance money, it had a very restrictive and very conservative uh, mandate applied to it. Um, the fund, however, did perform exceptionally well, and I believe it has one of the en most enviable track records uh, in um, South Africa when it comes to hedge funds, and uh, it definitely is still our, our flagship fund. In 2012, we started to broaden our product range a little bit uh, with the launch of the Performer Fund, and the idea of the Performer one Fund was basically just to unshackle the investment team a little bit um, with the mandate, um, still not, not uh, widening it, uh, the, the risk parameters too much, but to, to just allow us to express our investment cases with a little bit more creativity and just a little bit more flair. Um, since then, the Performer Fund has uh, uh, been very successful and it um, has won quite a few awards um, at the Hedge News Africa um, uh, award ceremonies. On the team, um, we currently have 10 investment professionals, five of whom sit in um, 
uh, our London office, um, from which we um, uh, manage our Capric the Capricorn Gem Fund, and five uh, investment professionals sitting in uh, South Africa. I am then the, the lead portfolio manager for the South African hedge funds. Um, and basically it's just um, keeping the same investment philosophy across both funds, but perhaps just expressing our high conviction views with a bit more conviction and flair in, in, the, in the performer fund. Capricorn has been very successful in keeping the team together and I believe we have a very good mixture of youth and experience uh, within our investment team. And we are definitely breeding some, some very capable analysts who excite me greatly. I think the only problem that I have is those investment analysts will probably become better portfolio managers than I am at, at present. Um, but that should not uh, really bother the investors that much. Um, but I do believe we have a very nice mixture of youth youthful exuberance and um, an experience coming through in Capricorn and that should um, put our funds and our investors in good stead. Stefan, please give us your definition of a hedge fund and describe some of the financial tools that are employed in hedge fund strategies that actively seek alpha and manage the downside risk. That's quite a broad question. I, I think I'm going to focus a little bit today on on a topic that I think a lot of people are actually uncomfortable with, and that is shorting in, in the hedge fund industry. And why we short, what the, the uses are of, uh, of shorts, and um, the benefits of them. So firstly, I, I would like to say that there are so many tools available um, to, to investment managers and investment professionals in, in the financial world. But many of them are not available to traditional um, product offerings. Um, and this is where I believe hedge funds really have a leg up um, on, on those uh, traditional funds. Um, and I see the biggest, the biggest goal for a hedge fund manager is just to optimize these tools, to make sure that by optimizing your cost of funding, your leverage, your short positions, um, the opportunity costs uh, within the fund, by optimizing all of those costs, you can actually generate significant alpha um, even over and above your stock picking potential that, that, you, that you can generate some alpha on as well. So let's expand a little bit on, on, on shorts. In Capricorn, we spend a lot of time off short, on, on our short book. Our short portfolio is a significant um, deriver of uh, or um, generator of alpha for our fund. And I do believe that it's actually, it's something that not a lot of people focus on and they don't see the value in shorts. And the reason for this is that everybody basically just looks at it as a profit center or as a way to protect against market movements, or let's say to lower volatility. We actually look at shorts very differently. We have four main categories that we put our shorts in. They are protecting you on from, from market um, risk, protecting factor risk, protecting you from factors, um, profit centers and funding shorts. So let me explain a little bit on, on those uh, four categories. So if you look at market shorts, they are the traditional short the index and protect your portfolio from sell-off in the general equity markets. We actually don't like those shorts that, that, um, that much. Firstly, it, we feel it's a very blunt tool um, for a very specific task. Um, and then it can actually expose you to more risk than you are aware of and can take you completely uh, from left field sometimes. And a good example of this was perhaps the SAB takeout um, a few years ago um, where the index rallied significantly just because of SAB, but the rest of the market was actually down. So we use those very seldomly and only in very extreme events. The factor um, shorts are also very specific shorts. These are, for example, when you want to hedge out a specific risk that you're uncomfortable with in an investment case out of a wider investment case. An example of this will perhaps be um, an Exaro um, uh, long position, if you perhaps like Exaro, and you like the coal division, but you don't like the iron ore exposure. You're uncomfortable with the level of iron ore, so you will go and um, enter into a short position that is only exposed it to iron ore. And this will then allow you to take that iron ore risk out of an Exaro investment thesis and only get exposure to, to the coal um, assets. 
This we're a lot more comfortable with. It is a, a very much more specific, but it is also very dependent on the investment case. On some instances, it's probably not worthwhile to, to take that risk. It introduces um, uh, variables that, that you may not be aware of, but it is a short that, that we are much more prone to do. The next one, and that's probably the rarest of them all, is actually a profit center risk uh, short. These shorts are there in which we want to make money in where we hope that the share price will go down in future and we can close it at a lower price. Stock markets go up <laughs> in general. 70% uh, of the time, um, stock prices tend to move higher and it will be very specific, company specific mistakes that will cause us to enter into a, um, a profit center short. These will usually be when there were poor allocations of capital or just a bad investment decision made by the management of that team. As I say, we're always um, uh, ready to, to try and extract alpha from these positions, but they're actually qu quite few and far between and a small portion of our short book. Our biggest portion of our short book is actually our funding short book. Basically what this is, is these are stocks where we believe they just do not have anything that's going to drive their um, share prices. And we believe that th these shares will actually underperform the yield on cash over a year, three month, three year period. These shorts are incredibly valuable to a hedge fund manager because it allows you to minimize the cost of buying your longs or the opportunity cost of um, actually having cash in your portfolio. And that's why we always have the benchmark of these shorts, the funding shorts, as cash. They have to yield less than um, the cash yield um, over a certain period. Otherwise, it will be better just to borrow money and go and uh, invest that in your, your long book rather than funding it with a short. And Capricorn has been very, very successful in finding those shorts that, that just go nowhere for a very long time and optimize our cost of capital and our funding um, position. How is your fund different from other alternative and mainstream products? I think I'm not going to talk about the product, although I, I can talk a lot about the Performer Fund and, and why I believe that that's a, a very exciting vehicle and it definitely excites me. But I think the key thing that I want to focus on here is the investment philosophy of Capricorn I believe is quite a differentiator for Capricorn and the way we look at stocks and the way we pick stocks um, are, I believe, a very attractive um, offering um, and a differentiating offering to, um, to the broader um, investment community. So basically, I want to focus on, on three things uh, for, for Capricorn. Firstly, it's how we derive at an investment case. Secondly, it is what kind of type of stocks we, we look at. And finally, how do we decide to exit a, a um, position? So firstly, how do we derive and uh, get to our investment cases? My analysts always get uh, very angry at me, but I always tell them that they must know that the moment they start with a, um, a model, they must know that the model is going to be wrong. Their answer is going to be wrong. And if they're right, it is just because they were two offsetting wrongs that equal the, the right. That is a very important thing I believe investment managers should know, is that once you start building a model, you're only going to get to a point estimate. And that estimate is actually not worth a hell of a lot if you do not look at the distribution around that estimate. You have to not question, uh, um, ask, what do I think the earnings of a company is going to be? You have to ask, what is the market expecting the earnings of the company to be and what we believe the distribution around that estimate that the market is expecting is and how you should position for it. So for example, if we believe that there is a considerable um, probability that a company will exceed the expectations of the market, um, then obviously that is quite an attractive long position. If we believe there's a significant um, possibility that it's going to uh, be uh, lower than the market expectation, then that's obviously the, the short position that, that you will look for. The, um, the way we, we build it is just basically to focus on the variables that, that will drive the, the company. So, and we will build distributions around those variables. And finally, once you've built distributions around every single variable within your model, 
you will get to the, very, um, the distribution of that exact point estimate to see what, what the earnings growth is going to be over a period and the sensitivity to various um, um, inputs into your model. Those are the most important things that we look at. We try to find the inputs that will really drive the earnings of, of, a, of a company and especially drive the outperformance or underperformance of, uh, of a company relative to the expectations of the market. So that's the first thing we look at. Secondly, we are momentum guys. And we're not price momentum guys. We're actually company momentum guys. We look for companies that have significant tailwinds in their business, where you can see revenue growth, you can see margin expansion, which obviously then derives in earnings growth um, being greater than the overall market. The key thing for this is that we believe that a company that has the wins in its, um, in its sales will make the right decisions. They will take front foot decisions. They will go and actively pursue um, um, opportunities that will enhance the overall um, uh, company as a whole. Companies on the back foot that currently is seeing pressure on the industry, pressure on their sector, pressure on their specific market segment with a competitor perhaps coming in, those companies will take back foot decisions. And I believe all companies have been in those situations and even in Capricorn we have seen when, when, when we're on the back foot, we sometimes take decisions, not that's in the, in the interest of the company in the future, but for the company in that specific period and it may be detrimental to the company in the future. So that's why we, we look for those types of company. We look for momentum in the business, in the um, thematic trends is what, what we call it. Um, and that's why we, uh, uh, the best way probably to describe our investment style is thematic investors. But that is perhaps a little bit too vague, but um, we look for company uh, momentum. Finally, it's how do we exit? We do not have price targets. Um, we do not have any specific level where if it hits this, we will exit or anything like that. And what we base this on is basically George Soros um, in his book, The Theory of Lef Reflexivity, um, explained it quite well. He said, imagine a share price is a pendulum and the natural state is fair value. If the pendulum swings from overvalued to undervalued, it will continuous, uh, continuously swing through that fair value point on, uh, on every single um, cycle. But it will never stop actually at that fair value. And in fact, it spends the least time at that uh, fair value because that's the time when it has the most momentum up or down. That's why we will rather ride a stock and um, um, benefit from the upside on our longs or on the uh, downside on the shorts and rather take that full uptick and only once we see that that momentum in the share price and the valuation of the share price starts to stale, to get stale, that's when we will look to exit a, a long position or short position on the other side. We don't have pro price target and hence we, we're very comfortable sitting on a position for two, three, five years. Um, we definitely see ourselves as long-term thematic investors. Stefan, thank you very much for sharing your time today, telling us more detail about yourself, the firm and the fund. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more information, please visit our website.